Hi, welcome to another episode of The Art of Physics. This one has to do with Newton, of all people. And from 1666, I'm going to say 1966, from 1666 on, we've known about gravity thanks to Newton. So that's always fun. Uh, I think we have a graphic that shows what Newton was doing when this idea about gravity occurred to him. Is that graphic going to show up there someplace? Yeah, I don't know if the apple was quite that big, but in any event, Newton figured out about gravity. And of course, things fall because of gravity. Well, yes, they do. But you can wonder, if things fall because of gravity, do they fall faster and faster and faster? Gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared, going on and on, accelerating down toward the Earth, so that, whoa, if things fall from pretty high, then they would be going pretty fast by the time they hit the Earth. So well, we have an expert with us today. This is Diane Budai. Hi, Diane. Welcome Hi, to Art. the program. Thanks for having me. Sure, you betcha. She's an expert on these things, and so we'll see exactly how that expertness plays out as we do this. But I'm going to show you a couple demonstrations about the physics part of this first. Uh, so you think things fall, and they just keep falling faster and faster. Well, no. There's a little fine print here that the freshman physics eventually tells you about. The fine print is this. As objects fall in the air, what occurs is there's friction between the air and the object that's falling. And so eventually that friction makes a drag force which opposes the weight. And when they finally equal out, then what happens is it doesn't go any faster. So it goes only at this one speed, which they call terminal velocity, which... Now Terrible can, term. You don't like that term, no. do you? Okay. Terminal velocity, it has some connotations that we don't like at all. But nevertheless, the point is, it doesn't go any faster. It eventually goes as fast as it's going to go. So I wanted to show you a couple of things that would hopefully give you a clue about what's happening. Let's see if Greg can get this. Um, I'm going to drop a couple of things. And, but to show this in a slower fashion, can you get this guy, Greg? Can you see him? This guy is Gumby. And so I'm going to have Gumby fall slower than usual. And the reason he's going to be slower is I'm going to let him fall into this water. So, but I have Gumby's twin brother here. And Gumby and his twin brother are going to fall differently because of the fact that in one case, Gumby is just going to fall straight in. And the other case, I'm going to fold Gumby all up because you can do that with Gumby. You can do that with people too? Sometimes. Sort of? Okay. That's my other profession. <laughs> we'll get there. So we're going to fold up this Gumby, and we're going to see what happens when this Gumby falls in comparison to the other Gumby. So what do they call this position in diving? Is this the pike position? I forget what that is. In any of them. I, I would guess more like layout. Layout. Pike there is we when go. you're just bent right in the middle. Oh, right. That's right. So this is the layout position. So, uh, so Greg, can you come in on this one and see if we drop Gumby into this, see how fast Gumby falls. That wasn't too fast. I mean, you could see that pretty well. What happens to Gumby's twin brother, on the other hand, may be a little different story. Ready for this guy? Here we go. I think it was a little faster, not much, but a little faster. So then um, I can show you this. This is going to be a challenge to you, Greg. You're going to have fun with this one. I'm now going to show it to you in real time because I have here a skydiver. And this skydiver, I'm going to flip the skydiver up in the air, and he's going to fall down. And what happens to the skydiver, if it's the skydiver only, you would just have the skydiver, and he would fall about like Gumby did, only faster because it's in air. But this skydiver has a parachute. Watch what happens to the skydiver. We're going to go up and then down. You ready for this? Ready? Up. Fell right into <laughs> Diane's lap. Right here. And it fell down very nicely at the end because the chute opened. So that made it pretty good. So th when, good when the chute opens, here's what happens. You have all this area exposed, and the area gives you a lot of drag. So it falls slower when the chute opens. Well, there are some people that take advantage of that. And Diane is one of those people. So let's talk about this just a little bit, because Diane has this capability of showing about falling in ways that are really good. So do we have anything that shows any of this? Let's see if there's any graphic that will show up. This looks a lot like you, Diane. It was me. 
And what are you doing here? I am skydiving. My, so, my maiden voyage really? as a skydiver. So you're yes. stepping out of an airplane? I am. But, wow. to, but to be fair, I am doing what's known as a tandem skydive. So I am gratefully and thankfully attached to what I would describe as a master skydiver who has more than 11,000 jumps to his <laughs> credit. And he really was in charge and made me feel very, very secure in, in trying this. 11,000 jumps? Yes. That's amazing. Do we have any more? It's getting a little further. That's the airplane you jumped out of. Yes, we were actually on our own in the air. Wow. That's terrific. There it is, a little further down. Somebody was falling with you and taking uh, these pictures? Yes. There was a um, videographer that's also a skydiver that took some independent video. Wow. All right, so now, now you're free of the plane. And right. I noticed that you're closer to the ground than your partner is there. Right. So is that a good thing? Um, I, I, it was just <laughs> fine, but that's just the way they set it up. You're always in the front. Okay. So there you are. Oh, look at the uh, scenery below. You can it's see those kind of squares of things that are growing and some brown patches and green. Was that really neat to look at? It was absolutely beautiful. This was, um, we did this in Davis, California. So oh. about an hour and a half or so um, north east, I think, of San Francisco. Huh. Um, absolutely beautiful. Wow. There you are again. Uh, one of those people, is that somebody that you know? Yes. T um, <laughs> to your left, the guy in the red, is the guy that I did the tandem jump yeah. with. And to your right, my left, is my son, ah. who, did, who did the skydive with us. So you can feel pretty confident about that. I uh, did. I really did. Okay. That's good. Wow. Glad to hear that. So um, you say this was the videographer that was with you. So there's probably right. a video. So can there we, is. we play some of that video, sure. David? Can you rack up that video? Maybe Diane will tell us what's happening here. Oh, there you are. You're getting into the plane. There's your <laughs> My son. My son egging me on. <laughs> are those special skydiver symbols that they're giving you there? Did yeah, you this is, the, it's my, my old mom version is the thumbs up. It's their version is the uh, hang loose. Yes, All right. exactly. So, oh, good. Now here's the video. So now you look like you're having a great time. Truly I was. I, I, I think I on. told you that I was far more excited than I was scared. It's, a, it's just a truly awesome experience. <laughs> they had to, is that like a GoPro camera? They had to write the camera because it was yes. pointing the so wrong the, way? So the little thing that you see now is not the main parachute. It's just a little, um, I don't know what they call that one, but it just Grobe gets you right like in the air so that you're indeed you know, vertical. Yeah, so you can look down and see what's down there. But right now we are doing what's, what's called free falling. And that's my son coming into the... Right, kind of hanging coming, on swimming there. Swimming into us, so to speak, to kind of dock or hold hands and then he broke off to land that's the parachute there flying. goes the parachute okay and, and now then you get this up. wonderful fairly long time it seems to to just float down you just feel like you're flying wow i guess you are flying we are now you can actually control that a little bit by uh pulling on the uh shoot the uh what do you call them the reins or whatever those right right are. one can i i was feeling a little too um in awe of all of this experience to do it myself. But the person who is behind me, the, the um, tandem person, mm -hmm. is indeed um, steering it. You oh. can steer it, you can do some turns. Oh, that's good. Now you're landing. This is us landing. Oh, the landing looks terrific. You look like you kind of were going down a kid's slide or something. That's exactly what, what he told me it would feel like. We're supposed to lift up our legs and land sitting down. Wow. More experienced skydivers like my son will la like my son. There he yeah, is. There is. Will land on their feet and just walk away. But oh, wow. I don't have the experience. The 400 jumps behind me that he has. <laughs> 400 jumps. That is just amazing. So that was an experience that you did because of a special event. Uh, it, it was really done because our son has been doing this all along and telling us how much he really likes it. And kind of, we said when we come out to visit you in the summer, you know, we would like to just come and watch you skydive. And eventually that turned into, oh, you guys should try it. <laughs> and finally I said, yeah, you know, I think, I think I'll try this. Wow. So I'm, I'm truly glad I did. It was a great experience. Wow. It's a lot of fun. Now, do you expect to do a lot more of this? Do you think that'll become your hobby or? No, <laughs> that's the short answer. Um, I don't expect to get certified and, and do it all the time, but I truly would not rule out ever doing it again. Ah. If the opportunity arose and maybe I was visiting him again and he was skydiving, I would consider doing it again. Wow, that is absolutely It was terrific. that much fun. So, um, so you don't do this for a living? 
No. Well, what do you do for a living? I'm a pediatric physical therapist, and I work with uh, special education students in a public school system. So P P D, huh? P T. P T. Sorry. Right. Oh wow. So uh, boy, there's some physics in that too, isn't there? Quite a bit. Like I think I mentioned to you, two semesters in college. Yeah. <laughs> but but must really, been your favorite subject. Not so. The, <laughs> I said the physics part, the concepts great, the math not so much, but truly there is a lot of physics involved in what I do with with my patients or students and helping position them and helping with some bracing for them. Oh, yeah, sure. physics concepts. I'll bet you do. But you probably don't do much in the way of math with that, no. particularly. But it doesn't matter, because if you understand physics well enough, you can do it without math. Thankfully. So, yeah, fortunately that works out very well. Well, I know you have other hobbies, too. I think we have a graphic of one of your hobbies. Let's see if David will put that one up and see a graphic that looks like. <laughs> What are you doing there? Well, it was a part of a bike ride, although we're stopped right there. We were on um, l like a, an all-day ride. I think it was about a 40-some mile ride. And we stopped at the GM Proving Grounds. And as part of this ride, they allowed riders to actually ride on the track of the GM Proving Grounds. It was an interesting experience. Oh, wow. In fact, I recognize some of those people there. Uh, one of them is Phyllis, who mm -hmm. was on a, an earlier program, in fact. Right, so. she's the one holding the sign. That wasn't a hell of a ride, though. That was a different one that Phyllis went on. Right, this was Tour de Livingston. And Tour it was de Livingston, okay. fall of 2013. Okay, very good. Was that fun? It was really fun. Yeah, that's good. We do both ride bicycles, and sometimes we are liable to uh, meet at mm -hmm. Birmingham for uh, right. Sunday brunch or yep. whatever, yep. along with some other bicyclists, and always a have a good time doing that. So, um, so what other kind of hobbies are you willing to talk about, or is this enough? I guess I would say those are the main ones. Main ones, the okay. The main ones. That's um, good. Try and do other exercise, but, but by far I like biking when the weather permits. Yeah. Well, fortunately, we've had a nice uh, weather permitting uh, this For summer. For quite a while, yeah. we did. It hasn't been bad, so. Well, that's good. Um, you know, I always like to have Albert Einstein say something worthwhile here, and I was having a hard time getting him to say anything about um, skydiving, and so I had to go really long and hard. Um, Einstein says, so here's the quote that I got from Einstein. It says, if at first you don't succeed, so much for skydiving. <laughs> Oh, uh, excuse me. There's only there's very few people have this number. Hello? Iffy. Yes, yes, Iffy. Okay. What, what's your problem? Iffy is instantaneous feedback for you, it says, and this is for me. And Iffy is now giving me a message. Uh, no, 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 no. It was Einstein. No, no. You're kidding. You found it on the internet and it wasn't Einstein? Can you show me who it was? Can you? No, I guess that isn't Einstein, is it? Do you know who that is? Looks like Henny Youngman to me. It's Henny Youngman. It is Henny Youngman. My gosh. Well, I think I must have blown that one then because that's not an Einstein quote. But, but on the other hand, Iffy, you've got to give me a little credit because um, Henny Youngman was a guy who liked to fiddle, and Einstein sort of likes to fiddle. Um, I think that uh, Einstein's fiddle. Maybe, maybe they were similar in their fiddling. Um, I'm, you know, I think I'm in trouble. I've uh, actually had some trouble with Einstein before, and I think he may be on my case again. So uh, if he, um, don't tell Uncle Albert about this, okay? We'll just let this be our secret. Okay, thank you very much. If he, call anytime. <clears throat> you know, it's such a shame because Uncle Albert is such a nice guy, but he gets disturbed with me. I'll have to make it up to him in, in some fashion or other. But I don't think I'm going to take him skydiving. I doubt he's going to go. But I'm glad you his did. Loss. <laughs> uh, yes, it is his loss. But I'm glad you did. And thanks so much for coming and sharing your experiences with us. That was wonderful. Thank you for having me. Uh, you betcha. So until next time, I'm Art Wiggins.